Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1, Tutorial 7a on the Statement of Cash Flows. This is the first of two tutorials that are focused on constructing a statement of cash flows, also known as a cash flow statement. This tutorial will emphasize preparation of the operating section of the statement of cash flows using the indirect approach. There are two key learning objectives for this tutorial. First, we will review the components of the statement of cash flows. And then second, we will prepare the operating section of the statement of cash flows using the indirect approach, which is acceptable under both ASPE and IFRS. The alternative approach available is the direct approach, and that approach will not be emphasized in this course. The direct approach is emphasized in the next level intermediate accounting course. Before we begin constructing our statement of cash flow, we will briefly review the three components of the cash flow statement. The first section you will find is the operating activities, and this section identifies cash that is generated or used in normal operations of the enterprise based on the income statement and changes in short-term working capital, i.e. changes in current assets and current liabilities. The second section is called the investing activity section, and this section identifies cash that is generated or used related to non-current assets. That could include the purchase or sale of property, plant, and equipment, and other investments. The third section is financing activities, and this section identifies cash generated or used related to non-current liabilities and equity financing. It is in this section that we will look at changes relating to bonds, mortgages, any long-term debt, and of course shareholder-related transactions like issue or repurchases of shares and dividends paid. In order to construct a statement of cash flows, you require two source financial statements. The first is an income statement, and we only need an income statement for the current year. The income statement is the source of the beginning net income, which is used to start off our indirect method cash flow, and it is also the source of non-cash expenses that are incurred in the current year. The second source is a comparative balance sheet. So we need a balance sheet that shows both the current year and prior year ending balances. The comparative balance sheet is the source of changes in current and non-current assets and liabilities from prior year to the current year. This tutorial is based on the Constanza Corp example, so please make sure that you download the correct file so you can follow along. In the data provided, you will find a comparative balance sheet or statement of financial position and an income statement. These statements are absolutely necessary to creating a statement of cash flows. The requirement for this problem is to prepare a statement of cash flows using the indirect approach and tutorial 7a this one will focus on the operating section. Tutorial 7b will focus both on the investing and financing sections. We begin our statement of cash flows the same as we have with previous financial statements, and that is with a title. We begin with the company name, in this case Costanza Corp, and the name of the statement is a statement of cash flows. That's typically what's used for IFRS. ASPE, you can also call it a cash flow statement. And the timing or the period is for a period of time. So for the year ended or the six months ended or depending on what the beginning and ending period is, but for the period ended December 31st, 2020. Remember that this is different from a balance sheet, which shows as at a certain date. We then begin our statement with the operating activity section. And in our operating activity section, we always begin with the net income as presented on the income statement. And so directly from our Costanza income statement, we have net income of $112,000 to kick off our cash flow statement. Then we make adjustments for non-cash items. And these are things that usually show up on our income statement, but for which cash is never actually transacted or exchanged. Our examples here include depreciation expense of $155,000, again directly from the income statement. There is a gain on the early retirement of bonds and that shows up as a negative value here because what happens is this $3,000 is cash that was actually never received. So what we must do is eliminate it from the income. So this $3,000 is actually included in the $112,000 but it's non-cash so we have to lower the income by $3,000. 
The depreciation expense is also included in the 112000 but that's not a cash item either. So what we have to do is we have to increase our net income because what we're trying to do here is get from a net income that's prepared on an accrual basis to cash-based net income, if you will. And then the third item is a loss on disposal of some property, plant, and equipment. That loss was $4,000, again, directly from the income statement. What it does is artificially lower our net income because it's based on accrual accounting and not cash accounting. So we must add that amount back to the net income to arrive at a cash-based number. So 112000 plus the depreciation expense minus the gain and plus the loss. What you're starting to see here is that we will add back expenses and losses and we will subtract any gains because those are non-cash amounts. If you're ever unsure about whether something is a non-cash item, ask yourself this simple question. Can I write a check for it? If you can't write a check for it, just like you cannot write a check for depreciation expense, you can't write a check for a gain or loss, that's the difference between what something costs and the amount of money you get for it. So if you cannot write a check for it, it's a non-cash item and should be adjusted here. Now after adjustments for non-cash items, we then look to current assets and liabilities from our balance sheet and calculate the changes between the accounts found here. We're starting to look at changes in non-cash working capital items. You recall perhaps from other courses or the prerequisite course for this, working capital is comprised of the short-term and assets and liabilities, our cash and accounts receivable, our accounts payable and inventory. These are all items that form our working capital. The only items that we would exclude here would be current portions of long-term debt items, since those items are actually related to non-current liabilities, like long-term loans, mortgages, or bonds, rather than short-term working capital. Process is to simply proceed in order through the accounts presented on the balance sheet, starting with current assets first, and then moving over to liabilities, or current liabilities. So the first item on our Costanza Corp balance sheet is accounts receivable, where we observe an increase of $7,000 because we went from $364,000 to $371,000. This change, this increase in AR, represents an outflow of cash. So Costanza is making sales, but those sales are actually not turned into cash. When you make sales on account or on credit, you're not turning into cash. So in essence, the customers are using the company as a bank for short-term financing of their own working capital. Now, if the accounts receivable had decreased, then it would represent an inflow of cash, indicating that Costanza would be turning receivables into cash as it collects. Next is inventory, where we observe a change of $26,000. Uh, and in this case, the inventory dropped by $26,000. It went from 486 down to 460, and so that's a decrease in inventory. When we see a decrease in a current asset, this actually is considered to be an inflow of cash. Uh, think of it as inventory being sold for cash. So if, our, if inventory ties up cash, if we were to go to somebody and purchase inventory and hold it and pay them cash, that's cash going out. And then as we're able to convert and sell the inventory, presuming that it is for cash, that inventory is then turned into cash. So we generate cash. Thus, if inventory has increased, then an outflow of cash would be the result. After inventory is prepaid expenses, where we observe a $9,000 increase. So we went from 17,000 up to 26, and that represents an outflow of cash. Again, the company basically prepaid. It, it took cash, paid for expenses in advance, and that ties up cash. So now we've gone through all of the current assets relating to working capital in our Costanza example. Now we shift over to the current liability section. Our first item is a decrease in accounts payable of $59,000. Now this represents a cash outflow because the company is paying off money it owes to its suppliers. What you'll notice is that the effect of changes in current liabilities on cash inflows and outflows is the opposite of changes in current assets. So that's something that you just want to watch as you proceed through uh, the various questions that you work on and through this tutorial, is you'll see that whatever you determine to be a change in inflow and outflow for current assets is the opposite for current liabilities.
After accounts payable is a change in unearned revenues. The unearned revenues went from 78000 to 56000 so that represents a $22,000 decrease, and that also is an outflow of cash, which is why we are showing this as a negative number. Next is salaries payable, which increased from 17000 to 20000 and so that represents an inflow of cash. Having employees work for us to generate sales and not paying them right away is actually positive for cash flow and therefore it represents a cash inflow. After salaries is an increase in interest payable of $5,000 also representing a cash inflow as it went from $99,000 up to $104,000. Now you may be thinking that the increase in interest is a bad thing but try not to confuse expenses with changes in assets and liabilities. It may not be great that the company has to pay interest However, that the company has incurred interest expense to fund its business, but not yet have to pay that interest is actually positive for cash flow. Finally, we have income taxes payable, which decreased from 35,000 to 31,000. This represents an outflow of cash. Basically, cash was used to pay the tax. Now we have a completed cash flow from operating section where after starting with net income of $122,000 and adjusting for non-cash expenses and adjustments for non-cash working capital items for changes in those items, the company was able to generate $201,000 in net cash from its operating activities. And that's the terminology that we use, net cash from operating activities. As a user of financial statements, perhaps you can see the benefit to this statement. Having income of $122,000 may be good. However, that alone or that amount includes a rather large non-cash expense of $115,000. What this section shows us is that the company is able to show profitability, which is good, and generate positive cash flow from the normal course of business. And that's what you want to see. Profitable businesses that can generate cash are signs of good management and a potentially good investment. To give context now that we have completed our operating section, we are presenting the entire statement of cash flows that includes the investing and financing sections, which will be covered in the next tutorial. The idea is just to show how the operating section fits with the other two sections to provide a total increase in cash. So what we have so far is a $201,000 cash increase or cash provided by operating activities. And then we will see in tutorial 7b how the investing and financing sections are calculated. So let's conclude with some key points to remember. First is that if we have increases in current assets from prior year to current year, that will show up as an outflow on our cash flow from operating activities. If we have decreases in current assets from prior year to current year, that's an inflow. Okay, so you can see that those two are opposite. And then if we flip over to the liability side, increases in liabilities from prior year to current year are cash inflows. And then finally, decreases in liabilities from prior year to current year are outflows. This concludes tutorial 7a on preparing the operating section of the statement of cash flows. Please proceed now to the next tutorial 7b which illustrates the preparation of the investing and financing sections of the statement of cash flows.